Okay, so I just got back from my trip and I thought I'd just show my camping setup real quick before I take everything off. Um, it's a 2019 Honda Ridgeline RTL. I have the dish lights from Nolo Designs and a front skip plate. You probably see that down there. The lights are KCC2s. I have running boards that I've bent pretty badly going off-road. I would not recommend leaving the lawn if you do go off-road. I did the uh, door molding and the rain visors that really helps for airing out the car when it's hot outside. Um, inside it's a mess because I just got back from a trip but I just leave my scan gauge right here so I can kind of see transmission temperatures. I have a Pro Clips, the one here. I haven't really done much on this. Over here I have a Samsung Gal. Tap S7 Plus just mag magnetizes there. Aftermarket radio. This is for my inReach Mini. I just dock it here and then just plug in a cable all going around. I have this little temp sensor so I can see the temperature inside and outside of the car. My ham radio used to be up here. You can kind of see tape that used to be there. Fell down one day, hit the shifter and it cracked the screen and that's an icom id 5100 i used to mount the mic here with the ball holder but that broke off well it fell off so it just stuck right there with the ball mount not sure here it is so it just uses this ball and when it was stuck up here all that would happen is that go like that and it would just stick on. It was really nice when it was there. Um, have a aftermarket stereo setup. It's a Focal KRX2 with the Audison uh, Voice 5.1K HD with the Bit One back seat. Not much. It's just thrown with a bunch of junk in there. There's more on the other side. But I did this plate down here. Just a wooden plate. I just screwed in. It just helps me mount some stuff and depends on the arrangement I can put stuff there. Um, so this is probably the biggest questions I get asked is my DIY camper I have. Um, it's a GFC rooftop tent that I butchered and made it into a camper design. So when I custom did these here, let me see if I can do this. There we go. So when I custom made this, I used RV lock. Uh, door handles because they allow me to lock and unlock from the inside if I wanted to and open So here you can kind of see um, These are aluminum composite panel I just called a local plexiglass place and they were able to get it for me um, This is pretty much just following rip cords uh, on Tacoma World's design of it inch and a half square tubing and then over here I did uh, inch and a half by three inch so I can mount the GFC using the stock brackets that they had wasn't the best idea ever but these right here are for these latches so they can latch on but as you can see I can open on the inside and then I can lock them if I want to makes me feel a little bit more secure um let's see this one I have the lock for the tailgate but oh, let's see so I'll open this real quick And then I did the third brake light and oh, right up here is a backup camera that, well, it's a dash cam, but it's a rear view dash cam. It makes it a lot easier to see back where I'm going because I don't have any pass through window. But you can kind of see my setup. Uh, see, back here, um, this is the Honda, OEM Honda. Um, cargo net I just use it to store things I use a lot like this butane stove these are for the GFC I cut custom little panels out of the phone because I can't sleep towards the front I just use these to sit in the bed it makes it a lot more comfortable um, after a couple camping trips I realized I needed access to some things quicker than others so here would be here's the lid for my my, my frying pan plates olive oil uh, torch if needed coffee filters k2 
camping soap, so kind of get general ideas, things you need fairly often. And then I just use these D-ring hooks to for that bungee cord. And then that's a Dometic CFX28 fridge in there. Just food that holds enough for me for about a week by myself easily. Um, two people, maybe three or four days. Um, cargo bar just helps me hold things in place. Uh, this mess of the wiring is a seven way trailer wiring harness. It's a USA made cable. It has two 10 gauge wires, one seven, and then the rest are 14 gauge. This is my paper towel holder, but I ran out of paper towels. Then I just have this plain old sportsman trunk. This is purely kitchen stuff. So a Coleman stove and then a little mini pop-up sink, more paper, uh, paper plates. That's about it that's there. Um, I have this switch put here so I can control stuff, but I gotta turn it on real quick. I have a Switch Pro controller. So now that's on and then I can Swing controls, LED lights on the outside. See there, so they're on and off. And this one controls the one in the back. This one's for a pump. And the pump here is, there's a little uh, 12 volt pump that's in there. And then I put a spare head on there and I can have running water. I can show this here. Just plugs in there like that. Run this nozzle out. Then I just turn on switch three. And then there's running water. It's been really nice having that. I don't have to pull that jug out every time anymore, fill up water bottles or to clean dishes with. So that's what that seven gallon is. This is a heated vest for my backpacking trip. And then here, this is just a trash can with a gamma lid. It helps keep the smell out and pretty much cook, put trash in here, and then I leave it outside the car. Um, that's my seven gallon refill. Ideally, you should just have two of these and then I can easily just move stuff around or pour water so they're about the same size. But I definitely would go with the military can and maybe make it to where the lid holds this uh, quick disconnect and the uh, electrical for the pump because that would allow you to just switch this all over once that's empty so on and so forth five pound propane tank let's see what else is there um oh yeah so this is the wire for the pump here it's just six millimeter barrel jack connector and i made it to where i can disconnect this and run it off of a battery pack if i need to so that's that part I'll show you real quick um, I'll try to get better pictures of this, but oh, everything kind of fell over, but you can kind of see, here's my dual battery setup. It's an Odyssey battery. It's 190 amp hour. There's a Victron fuse, uh, not fuse, but current meter and a giant 200 amp breaker right here. There's a few other things in there. Um, I use a C-Tech DC to DC controller and I have a 170 watt solar panel on top of the AC. This is phase one of how I butchered this tent was I put a fantastic fan I think it was up here. This is a very basic one. It allowed me to still fit in the garage. I have a 170 watt energy panel. I used uh, Unistrut rails I DIY'd with the Unistrut brackets. Just had to custom drill some holes. Uh, on that right side, you can kind of see my Comet antenna. It's a 48 inch. I can't remember the model number, but it's nice. It get pretty out pretty far, 20, 30 miles. And then the GFC just pull on this. Sometimes it can be a pain because I get I rush juicy on the last day. Pack this up, but after that, just pull up and then the tent opens. And up here, you can see the panels in general. Um, 
you can see that one little small rectangular up there. That's just up there because that larger piece kept on sliding backwards and forwards. And I just needed one to sit on. And just like the actual GFC, you can actually push these covers upwards and rearrange it. I had help from Photo Runner on YouTube and Instagram give me rough dimensions for a lot of this stuff. So just push up. Again, move that over. Same with this one, and then this one can move. So I couldn't find this rail originally, like I thought it was one piece that what GFC made, but I ended up getting uh, aluminum one inch channel uh, C channel and uh, one and a quarter inch I think or one and one eighth um, L channel it's pretty much the same size as the C channel put them together drilled a hole and did um, solid rib nuts that was a pain to do I have some videos on how I did all that and I pretty much just use a C um, a ball bearing pull, uh, puller and it just compressed that for me because that was too cheap to buy the actual tool to do this and then I just took an air hammer and slowly hit everywhere just to push this on it was a pain but um, that's my general camping setup currently